Okay, here we go. Let's do this. Welcome y'all. Today we're gonna check out this thing right here from Phil Jones Bass. It's the Compact Plus, also known as the BG450. We'll open up the box. I'm gonna do what I call my first impressions. I'm just gonna look at it, check out what features it has, then we'll plug it in. I'm gonna play a bunch of different songs, a bunch of different styles and genres, and we'll just see what it sounds like both as a DI and then also, I've got some microphones back here. We'll mic it up and, and see what it sounds like in the studio. But first, let me unbox it. This right here. Safety first, everyone. Oh, this vibe is already open. Safety first, everyone. There we go, okay. All right, so here's the top-down view. Comes looking like this. You got a power cable right here. Got some styrofoam up top. Very well packaged. Got a handle up here. You know, I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna bring it down to the floor. I'm gonna bring it down to the floor over here. Finish it up. There we go. Go ahead and get the all the plastic wrapping off. All right, sweet. So uh, this right here is what we're looking at. We've got let's see, one, two, four of these. I, I think these are five-inch speakers. I'll double check in the manual, make sure. Um, up here on the top, what are we looking at? We've got bass, high bass, low mid, high mid, and treble. You know, let me zoom in on the camera a little bit here. There we go. Okay, so two bases, two mids, and a top end, so a five-band EQ. Uh, mute switch, active and passive. We've got an input and effect send and return, along with a mix knob. I'm going to assume that's for the effects loop. We've got an aux in for plugging in probably headphones. Oh, sorry, headphones over here. The aux in would be for, like, I don't know, iPhone, uh, some sort of backing tracks. So I'm going to guess, I don't know, maybe 40 pounds? 30, 40 pounds, it's not that bad. <coughs> you can definitely catch it. It's not the end of the world. Um, very cool. On the back here, let's take a look at the connectivity real quick. On the back side, we've got a DI out, awesome, that is both pre and post EQ with a ground lift, that's awesome. We can also do a line in and line out. So if you wanna plug in a synth bass or a keyboard or something else, Line out, I guess you would use that if you want to go into another amplifier. We've also got a extension speaker. I know that you can stack any of the other Phil Jones cabinets with these. They all have the same uh, homage, I think. So the C2, the I've got the eight speakers over here, or the C4, whichever ones uh, you've got. I know you can use the same speakers with all of them. So let's plug it in, see what it does. All right, so let's plug this thing in. On the back, you can see I've already run a line out to actually, I'm running it to my Kemper over here, purely to use the tuner. As I was saying it while I was unboxing, I was like, oh yeah, what would you need a line out for? Oh yeah, duh, a, a, a tuner output. So we're gonna run the line out to the tuner. I've already got the power plugged in and I'm gonna leave the extension speaker unplugged for now. I just wanna hear how loud this thing is, at least in, in, in this room. I'll take a step back and we'll start there with volume. And let's just go ahead and do this now. I'll go ahead and plug in the DI, but for the next couple of minutes, the only thing that you're gonna hear in the room is this microphone, probably back over here a little bit. And uh, let's just see how loud it is. Let me grab a bass really quick. Everything's flat up top, if I'm not mistaken. Excellent. I'm gonna leave the input all the way up. That's not so much a gain as much as it is like an attenuator. So it's just sending the full output of this bass, which is a Sadowski Metro Express and everything's flat. I'm gonna go passive. So the preamp is totally turned off and this is just the sound of the bass. Both pickups turned on. Hold on. Note to self, buy new mic stands. Zounds, we need new mic stands. And I got posters falling down. Okay, here we go. All 
Okay, I can confirm the tuner out is working because <laughs> my Kemper uh, has signal right now. So that's a good sign. And I know you guys probably can't hear too much of the bass because the microphone's facing the wrong direction. But let me do this. Let me just make sure. I just wanted to see if this light up here was clipping. If I go to passive. Okay, so let's pull this down a bit. A little bit more, maybe halfway. Eh, a little bit more than that. Okay, trying to find the sweet spot on this bass. So let me do this. I'm gonna back up kind of around here. I'm gonna face the mic this way. And let's do this. Turn it this way. All right, let's crank this sucker. jump over to this screen right here and again I know that um, I'm not miking it up yet I just I'm testing the volume in the room so let me do this let me scoop up some of the low end get rid of those mids mellow out the top end a little bit this is probably pretty typical for like how I would play for most genres let me see uh, let me see how it reacts Nice, very big low end. I love this this low bass knob that most Phil Jones bass rigs have. I'm really just trying to get a feel for how it's reacting in this room, and yo, it's it's massive. I'm probably ten feet away right now. Depending on how hard your drummer plays, you might be able to get away with just this right here. Okay, now we're starting to get a little crunchy. Even with the top end rolled down, that's got a lot of sizzle. Yeah, all that ghosting, all the, the pluckety pluckety stuff, definitely coming through, I'm impressed. Um, and like I said, I love this knob right here. Let me just flatten it out really quick and, and remember what we started with. Turn the bass back on. Impressive, man. This thing's got headroom, it's got power, and uh, we can connect it to another cabinet, which I'm going to do in a second. But first, let's put a mic on this thing, let's dial in some tones, and see what kind of music we can play with it. Yeah, I'm going to 
Yes, and that looks pretty good. These speakers are really small. Typically, I'll, I'll use like a Beta 52 or an AKG D112. And where I place the mic is like, if it, here's the center of the speaker, and then like, you, you know, we've got the outer edge of the cone, kind of right here where the center meets the edge. That's where I like to put the mic. It gets a nice balance, plenty of boom, lots of punch. And then the more direct or the more woofy you need it, you can kind of move more to the center or more to the edge. Uh, these speakers are really small, right? Like it's only a, a couple of inches, I, I think five. These are only five inch speakers. So, uh, you know, the mic doesn't have as much wiggle room, but still it's similar placement to what I'm going for. Typically, let's pull up a song that we can actually play along to. Let me see, is this gonna work? Yes, it is. All right, so check this out. I've got a P bass pulled up. I'm gonna jump over to this angle actually. Uh, here we go. Is this working? Perfect. Okay, so I've got a P bass pulled up on this side. I'm gonna disappear here for a second, but you're gonna get to watch me dial in this tone. I hit the wrong button. Is it this one? Yeah, that's the one I want. Okay, so I'm gonna dial in a tone up here and just let this uh, track over here essentially loop itself. We'll go between here in the bass DI and then also the mic on its own. I'll be able to switch between the two and I'll tell you what I'm doing while I do it. First, let me mute this microphone so we're only gonna be hearing this one that's on the cabinet. So let me turn this one off. Hey, hey okay, good, that works. Honestly, I like it. It's pretty good. Uh, very mid-rangey, very honky. It's kind of what I'm going for uh, with the P-Bass. That right there was the DI. Let me just kind of A-B it against what the, uh, sorry, what the, uh, what the cabinet is doing, what the speaker mic is doing. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Let me go back and forth. I'm gonna A, B between the two. I'll let you know which ones I'm doing. Check it out. I'm starting with the DI and then I'll jump to the amp after a little bit. Okay, so obviously the amp is a little bit quieter just because uh, I didn't gain it up um, to, to, to match the DI. But yeah, we definitely hear the character of the speakers. Um, yeah, that EQ is very usable. Before I make any decisions, let me do this. I'm gonna pull in the backing track. So here's a kind of more progressive song, probably like Rush meets Toto is what I'm guessing. The song is called uh, Try to Sleep by my friend Bill Worrell. Same thing, I'm gonna start off with the DI only. The amp is, or the, the mic is muted. Let me just dial in a you know decent tone using the DI. Let me turn this all the way off so I don't hear it coming out of the amp. We'll start off totally flat. And um, yeah, let's just kind of see what we get. I'm going for something more smacky, uh, something with a lot of attack, hopefully. Uh, yeah, like typical prog rock. Bass only, the track is out. Let's see what we get. I like that. I don't like that. Oh shit. Oh, that adds a lot of attack. All right, 
cool. I really like what I'm getting out of this. Um, probably, since this is a rock song, we're probably gonna use the mic. So I'm gonna switch over the inputs now. I'm gonna turn off this microphone. Let's see just how it sounds uh, with, with the mix I, I currently have here. And if I have to change it, I will. But let's, let, let's see what we're starting with. Sounds pretty sick. You know what? I'm just going to pull the track in. I don't think I need to do anything with this. I might just make it a little bit louder to make sure it cuts through. Um, but yeah, let's, let's go ahead and pull in the track. That song is called Try to Sleep by my friend Bill Worrell. It's an awesome tune. Whoops, no, stop playing music. Um, what was I going to say? I, obviously, you can see I don't have any tattoos in that video. That was filmed in Germany in Weimar. I'm actually right down the street from Base the World uh, at my friend Tomon, uh, Tomek. Tomon. I was there for Tomon. Hanging with my friend Tom from Torillo Bases. Holy shit, that's a lot of tease. Uh, but anyways, yeah, that's the, um, that was back in 2019 I was over there. A lot of fun. Cool, honestly, what, what I really liked was this knob right here. Uh, I'm sorry, this one, I'm looking at it the wrong side. The, the, the high mid, the top end definitely helped out too, but here's the thing, I play with a pretty mild or soft attack. I really don't smack the strings. So whenever I play rock music, I feel out of place because I'm trying to bring this boomy, full bodied tone and what you really want is some smack on that string. And I, I didn't play with a lot of it when I recorded this, I can hear it and I was really, able to dial it in. If you see how high the treble and the high uh, mid knob are, man, yeah, I was really cranking it and definitely helped it to, to bring out something that wasn't really in my performance. And that's a cool thing that you can use gear for is, is fixing an issue, you know, like, oh, I don't play hard enough. Well, now I can just dial in some top in and there's the smack. And as you can see, which one is it? It's this button. Just boosting the lows a little bit, cutting some mud and then really cranking the attack on this one. And I thought it sounded great. Let's pick one last song to work on. Okay, so let's try out something a bit old school sounding and oddly enough on a five string active specter. I know you probably wouldn't put all those pieces together, but let's just see if we can dial in that tone with this bass, this amp, this mic. Let's see what we get. Um, I'm going to solo up just the dry signal and yep, flatten everything out. Okay, let's see what we got starting with. There we go. Okay, let's back off the signal a little bit. Amp is off right now. Oh, God, come on. Oh, that's so full. I like that. That's probably 250 or 300 or something. You know, honestly, I, I, I wouldn't hate that on this song, but probably I'm going to do the opposite. This one right here is really helping the finger strike to come out. We really don't need any of the top end on this one. Not bad. I'm gonna start it over from the beginning. Probably I'm gonna go with the, the amp track on this one also. But let's just see where it starts from. I'm gonna jump over to the amp right now. Honestly, I could go either way with it. Um, typically for old school, I like I like miking up a cabinet and I don't know. 
even though like Jamerson and Jocko and all those guys, like, yeah, in the 60s and 70s, they were just going direct. But I don't know. There's something about putting a mic in front of it, darkening up that top end, uh, just kind of helps it sit in the mix better. Let me pull in the rest of the track. Sorry, me. Sorry if this moment took too long, but I was stuck in my childish old way. Oh, come on. That sounds great. All right. So I'm going to go back and forth just like the last time. We'll go between the amp and the DI. Guys, tell me in the comments which one you think sounds best. Sorry if this moment took too long, but I was stuck in my childish old way. But when you hold my left, everything's all right. All right, now, before I give my, my final thoughts on this rig, I want to test it at full blast. So check this out. Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong angle. I've got two cabinets. Uh, this one down here, I believe, is the Phil Jones C8. So it's uh, the same speakers that's inside this one, but instead of four of them, there's eight of them. Both cabinets are receiving the full 500 watts. So I'm just going to back away from the cabinet. I'm going to turn it on full blast. I'm going to leave all the last settings that we were just on for that old school song. And uh, this mic right here, I'm just going to kind of point it, I don't know, away from it so it doesn't overload. And we're not miking the cabinets because really I just want to test the volume in this room with this mighty micro rig, which comes up to about my hip. All right. I'm, I'm 5'7". I'm not that big, but pretty pretty mighty. I'm going to crank this to about one third power. Let's see what we get. That is loud. Holy Okay, that's at a third power. Let's go like 70%. Here's 70% of the juice. Let's do it. No joke, it feels like there's an 810 in here. <laughs> I feel the walls rattling. This thing's got power. So final thoughts go like this. Um, the, 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 the five band EQ, stellar. I'm, I'm a big fan. Wait, is it one, two, three, four, five? Yeah, making sure. I'm a big fan of the Phil Jones EQ. It's very clean, very usable. And uh, this one is no different. That bass knob or the sub bass, whatever, the low bass knob, perfect for those mm frequencies. The next one over gets you that 300. That's the one that's gonna get you pop out of like a cell phone mix or something like that. Scoop out those mids, dial in the attack. And again, I like a dark tone, but you can brighten it up if you're doing slap. And then combining it with any of these cabinets, holy hell, bro, it's loud. This would compete with the, right, right here, th this rig, 100% would compete with a rock band, full slam and drum kit and, and two guitar amps blasting. I, I have no no doubts uh, that this rig right here would would compete on a on a full blown rock stage. So very cool, Phil Jones. Excellent job. Just guys, if you're interested in checking this thing out, there's a link in the description. Go check it out for yourself. I highly recommend you plug it in, take it to a practice room, take it to a gig. I think you'll be impressed. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate y'all.